Hi, welcome to the um, second blog vidcast uh, for April 2011. Uh, start with an apology really, it's 10 days almost since I published the written blog and the audio option. Um, I've just been away on annual leave and um, engaged with supporting many of you and attending symposiums etc. So um, I'm sorry that there's been a delay before the vidcast. Um, just uh, one piece of good news, I've become a granddad again, um, so welcome to Sadie Christine DL. Um, we're going to start, as usual, by going straight to the um, latest uh, blog. Uh, the next one will probably follow a lot quicker. And I'm going to start off, first of all, with all about careers. Um, I'll just play this video clip for an introduction, just so that you can see what it's all about. Choosing a career is extremely difficult. You're likely to spend a third of your life working, so it's important to know which careers are right for you. With so many different careers and so much information out there, it's easy to get confused, and it's difficult to even know where to start. That's why these guys have created All About Careers. OK, I'm going to stop it there. The um, website obviously has that on the home page. But very simply, it's aimed at learners between the ages of 16 and 24, it's got lots of information about graduate careers, degrees, internships and university life, as well as, before you turn off, lots of articles for learners who choose not to take the university route. Learners can find out about apprenticeships, FE courses and all kinds of employment opportunities that don't need a degree. The nice thing is, and it shows you over on the right hand side let me just uh, show you where I'm talking about over here um, you can sign in with Facebook which obviously is targeting a lot of younger learners more than anything else and it allows them to register and create a career profile uh, you can register interests and basically what they get is a customized notice board um, it's a dynamic careers information tool that feeds all of the relevant information onto this notice board. Articles, blogs, messages, industry news, forum threads, events information and application deadline alerts straight into the registered learner's own profile. As you'd expect from an information advice and guidance resource these days, um, users can also interact with their friends, share ideas, recommend articles and send others messages and generally help each other out as far as careers are concerned. As I say, the website link has been at the top of the page while I've been talking. The second find is all about connectability. Um, it's a visuals engine. It's a free, useful resource from connectability. It provides six templates. Let me just scroll down so you can see them. Where you can put a single image, two images, four images, six, 12, and 16 images. <clears throat> and it's used for creating achievement charts, choice boards, schedules, and storyboards. Uh, it's aimed at uh, communicating with people, um, or oh, young children really, whose language hasn't fully developed, but it can also be used with people with disabilities and or with people whose first language is not English. You basically choose a template, choose the images, uh, or upload the images, um, type any text if you require it, and then you can save it as a PDF, laminate it if you so wish. Um, the bottom right of the screen, and again I'll scroll up and zoom in a bit so that you can see it. Down here, he says, this bit. Um, provide some suggestions for using each type of the visual chart and it's well worth having a look at 
Um, the token economy, for example, which I'm just going to highlight there with an arrow, um, contains images of rewards that learners can earn for com completing tasks. That's just one example. Just give you a quick overview. Let's just do a single image. It will save us a lot of time. If I click on add, the photographs are actually loading at the moment. There are a whole load of different images. Okay, let's just take a bus number one. Okay, it will appear, school bus, and you might want to type a question in this space. Um, when you're done, you can click print or save as a PDF. Let me just show you where they are down at the bottom here. Oh, I shouldn't have done that, he says. Let's try again. Okay, so you can either click on the print button or the save as a PDF button. Um, couldn't be easier. Um, I think it's got a lot of potential for use as flashcards and all sorts of other things as well. Okay, so that's connectability. Third find. It's something that I've mentioned before, and that's voice thread. In fact, uh, Alistair Clark from uh, NIACE was asking uh, if anybody had been using voice thread. Um, accessibility has obviously been a problem with voice thread for some learners. Uh, it's launched a new accessibility option called Voice Thread Universal, where we are at the moment. You still have to have an account and sign in to um, VoiceThread. That's by clicking on the hyperlink that I've highlighted there. If you haven't got an account, then you would need to click on this hyperlink here. Okay, and register. There is uh, a guide that you can uh, add and you can then also visit the standard site which is there okay fairly self-explanatory the um, it's designed in particular for those who use screen readers to access online media um, it removes extraneous visual and text elements, it concentrates on providing clear and concise information and it makes it possible for more learners and more practitioners to participate in online conversations about media. Notice that VoiceThread is popular with educators because it does allow learners to have conversations about media and it also allows practitioners to deliver virtual instruction. Again, the address is at the top of the page, but you do need to sign up for an account to take part in it. Uh, GeoGebra, for those of you who follow my blog regularly, you will already have seen that I have posted uh, a UNET video about this. Let's just show you that. I'll just click, um, uh, or let's just move to a bit that is actually a little bit more interactive perhaps. Here we go, let's try this if, bit. If I move this, then you'll notice then you'll notice how the whole lot becomes more dynamic. Note how it's the centre of the circle is not in the triangle anymore, it's outside. And you can take it right the way across, look. Uh, you can change the position of A relative to the other. So that makes it really dynamic. Uh, if you, uh, again, I'll okay, I'm going to stop that there. It's basically uh, a website where, uh, and I've gone to the website now, the address is at the top. It's a website where users can produce various constructions, including points, vectors, segments, lines, conic sections, as well as functions, which can be altered dynamically, as you saw by the mouse afterwards. You can direct input equations and a range of commands including differentiation and integration are also available for use. 
The impressive thing, I suppose, about GeoGebra is the dual view of objects. Every expression in the algebra window will correspond to an object in the geometry window and vice versa. To find out more, you can go to this website and or you can go to the GeoGebra, um, let me just close that bit, the GeoGebra um, YouTube channel. Again, the link is at the top of the page at the moment, where there are lots of examples of how-tos and, and the like, which I think you would find useful. Uh, ideal for all of those who are engaged in STEM subjects. Okay, that's GeoGebra. The, the next finds, uh, the fifth and sixth find, um, are both about uh, sport and leisure, I suppose. The first one, Time to Run, is this particular website. Uh, it's, as the strap line states, and let me just zoom in so you can... Oh, I'm on the wrong page. Just bear with me a, a minute. Okay, as it says here... Okay, running information portal, and I think that sums it up nicely. Um, it's got a subsidiary presence here in the UK. This is the UK version, different address or slightly different address. Um, you'll see Paula Ratcliffe on the top of the screen at the moment. And it also has got uh, sites in Canada, South Africa, Finland, Ireland, the USA, plus some sections on uh, Malta News, Kenya Experience and Nambia News. Um, the interface is clean. It covers a wide variety of topics with some strong advice on injuries, nutrition and training. Let me just zoom in again so you can see where I'm talking about. Remember we're on the UK site now. Okay, so here we are. We've got uh, information on injuries, on nutrition, on training, and there are forums so that you can mix with people who have the same sort of interests as yourselves. The penultimate find is uh, run.com. When you're away on holiday and or when you're at home and you're looking for running routes, then here's a site that you can go to. Uh, I'll just scroll up a little bit and then zoom in for you so that you can see you know United States there are 12,268 routes and so it goes on through various parts of the world and it covers most places that you may well go on holiday and the like uh, if you go down to the near the bottom the United Kingdom, 1,327 routes there. And uh, you can search. So if I put in here Liverpool, okay, and choose the UK from the countries, okay, and then search for various running routes. You'll see that in Liverpool, uh, 41 running routes. Now the thing is, if people who are, in, uh, who are out there running share their routes with others, then this site is going to grow. And there is, let's just have a look, there's the Aintree run here. Let's just use that. That's one that most of you have heard of Aintree. And you'll notice that it has, let me just zoom out a bit. It's got a, a Google map. It also has down at the bottom here, let's just uh, highlight it for you. Down here, you can see the inclines and the dips of the run as you complete the actual course. Okay, uh, A useful site, especially if you are prepared to share your running routes with others who have an interest. Okay, um, 
final find today is a blog and I'll just briefly go through it. Uh, it's from Kevin Eikenbury, it's Leadership and Learning and he's looking at the four types of feedback and, and basically the blog is saying, well, First of all, when you deliver feedback, it should be balanced. And it suggests that there should be a balance of positive and negative feedback. The blog itself actually points out that there isn't just those two types of feedback, negative and positive. There's also negative feed forward and positive feed forward. I won't spoil the uh, blog for you, but it is well worth a, a read. You may not agree with it, but it is food for thought. I'm not sure if the website, and I must have a look, Markin, M-A-R-K-I-N, is still about. But that was a, a one that I used to use many years ago for marking essays. And it made you actually look for positive because your mark at the end depended on how many parts of the text that you were marking you marked as um, positive and how many negative, so you got an overall mark. And it did make you look for the positive as well as just trying to correct the errors. So that's all for uh, this particular vidcast. I hope you found it useful, and uh, I'm sure I shall talk to you again before the end of the month. I've got a blog ready. It's a case of posting it, producing the blogcast, and then, of course, creating the vidcast as I have now. Don't miss the next... Um, live TV broadcast which will be on the 9th of May. I'm not sure who's going to be doing it this time um, because uh, I shall be on annual leave on that particular day so there'll be a, at least a different face. I, I know that's something that you'll all look forward to. I'll talk to you again soon with the next vidcast uh, and or UNET um, vidcast. Uh, that's all for today.